Which one is the most orange? Oh, what the world? That's pretty frustrating, right? But you know what's not frustrating? Well, our new video is coming out here on YouTube. Now, here's a mini sample before we get today's lecture started. Fibrillation fireworks is the best way to remember V-Fib, the most deadly rhythm of all time. One of only two rhythms that you actually defibrillate or shock. Now, the other one is pulseless v tack So what is V-Fib? Well, ventricular fibrillation is a chaotic pattern of electrical activity in the ventricles in which electrical impulses arise from many different foci. All right, guys, before we get started, don't forget to do two things. First of all, subscribe right here so you can see all of our new videos coming out here on YouTube first before they get locked in our video vault at simplenursing.com. And also click right up there to your free demo to our new quiz bank, as well as 1,200 videos not here on YouTube. All right, guys, let's get our oldies webcam video started right here. Isometric line is that part where nothing's happening in the heart, nothing's contracting. Atriums contract, that's your P wave. Ventricles contract, that's your QRS wave. Last one, guys, is that T wave, that repolarization. So, when you're looking to interpret a rhythm, when you see a rhythm, just straight off the bat, and uh, I'm sure you guys have probably seen one in the clinical setting. I want you guys to use these five tips to um, basically as a criteria before you even start thinking of, oh, you know, that's atrial fibrillation, or oh, that's atrial flutter, or oh man, that's VTAC, we better go save that guy's life, or oh, that looks like a bundle branch block. Guys, ah, don't jump into it. Use your system first. And then use the um, the method of um, what is it called? The method of ah, I can't think right now. <laughs> the uh, the method of uh, basically blocking out of exclusion. There's, there you go. Um, use the this this five system that I'm talking to you guys about, and then use the method of exclusion by excluding the wrong answers first. So let's go into it, guys. So your first one in our five system step here is um, are there any P waves? Can you identify a P wave? If so, yes. You're moving on to step number two. Step number two, are there any QRS in the um, EKG? Is there a QRS? Are the ventricles depolarizing? Now, usually nine times out of ten, if the P waves are depolarizing, where's that blood going to? The ventricles, right? Atrium's depolarizing, sending that blood down into the ventricles. Ventricles swell. What happens after they swell? They contract. So you'll probably see a QRS wave. Uh, I just type. I just put two QR. <laughs> Sorry. I put QRR. No, no, it's QRS. Third thing, guys, which we haven't gone over in this lecture or any of the other lectures, but the third thing, guys, is measuring your PR intervals. Now you're like, oh my gosh, what's a PR interval? And you're pulling your hair out and you're saying, oh my goodness, public relations interval. No, 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 no. <laughs> Just relax, okay? It's not that complicated. Your PR interval is basically that line that separates your um, beginning of the, of the P wave to basically that uh, beginning of the QRS wave, okay? So this line right here to the beginning of that QRS wave. And that should basically that, that shows how much time between the contraction 
of that um, atrium to the contraction of the QRS. What we really want to understand here, just like we talked about with our SA node and our AV node, what we really want us to understand is that is there a block between conduction systems? After that SA node sends out that charge and after those atriums uh, contract, is there a breakdown in transferring of that system? And that's really what our PR interval shows us. Because if you have a P wave way over here and a QRS wave way over here, it's not supposed to be like that. They're supposed to be nice and concise and next to each other. Now the PR interval is usually supposed to be uh, anything less than four to five boxes, okay? And if you're thinking four to five boxes, what does that mean? I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's okay, relax. Um, every little box in an EKG, they draw them like this here. I don't even know if I have any room. But they have little boxes like this, right? And these little boxes, and then you have your P, Q, R, S, T wave, right? And they're like little boxes. Now those little boxes represent seconds in terms of your heart. So a little box means you have 0 .04 seconds, okay? And that actually will be on your test. But I didn't want to go into that. I want to talk about the big picture here. But 0 .04 is, 0 .04 seconds is a little tiny box. One little itsy bitsy box. So this PR interval has to be less than five boxes here to be considered normal. Anything longer than that, you have a widened PR interval. Basically meaning atriums are getting too far away from that QRS. Atriums are not contracting in the succinct amount of time for the QRS to pick up. So that's something we want to note. Alright, so fourthly guys, is we want to understand your rate here. So your rate. How fast are the QRSs contracting? So I want you guys to write this down, your P, your QRS, your PR, and your rate. And um, stop at rate. <laughs> um, I wanted to break this video up, but you know I'm just going to go into section 5, and then we'll kind of wrap it up in the next section before we go into any of our atrial ventricular um, dysrhythmias. So, our rates. How do you understand your rates? How do you count the amount of beats per minute? I want you guys to locate your QRS interval, and you can count the peak of that QRS interval, basically the R wave, and count how many are in a six second strip. That is not the best and not the most accurate way, but it is the easiest way for you to count a rhythm or count a rate. Usually you'll get a six second strip at least, and then you'll be able to see and hone in on, hey, that's Brady, it's less than 60. Hey, that's tacky, it's greater than 100. Or, hey, that's normal. But, um, you know, you'll have two beats at one time, a long pause, two beats again, a long pause, two beats again. It's, you know, here's the rate, but it's not rhythmic. It's, um, there's, a lot, there's a lot of pauses. It's not um, succinct. It's not, it's not good, you know what I mean? That's the fifth step here. Basically, your rhythm. Yep. 
Or is there a um, greater polarity? Or is it just erratic, just happening all over the place? And just shooting off, um, all over the place. And that's really something that happens with HDL, um, Alright guys, thanks for watching only one part in our full video here at SimpleNursing.com. If you guys click the link right here, you can get access to our full course, as well as our new quiz bank, which is really nifty. And also guys, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel right here. And last, but definitely not least, a big thank you to our script team and nursing family who helped us put together all these nifty videos.